Okay, let's measure some angles. <laughs> but first, I need to sit down. Oh man, this is so much work. This is so much work. <laughs> okay, this is an angle finder. Now, where I come from, we call it a protractor, but I'm kind of like a stranger in a strange land anyway. The nice thing about this thing is it looks like it's got a little vernier scale, so I can do sub-degree measurements. Well, we'll try that out. Let's see what we got. Okay, so I'm gonna put this over here. I'll put this over here. Can you see that? Yeah, maybe. Because I'm going to take notes. Because I, I want the brace thing, whatever it is, to slide right up into these little corners. So I need to know the angles, at least approximately. So, okay, let's draw a picture. Mm hmm. Okay, and we'll go X, and we'll go X, and mm -hmm. little F hole, little inverted F hole. See, I cut out my orange marker because I'm using an orange towel. Okay, I'll call this, uh, we'll start at the top, I'll call that alpha, beta, what's a gamma look like? Well, I remember gamma and delta, <laughs> and I'll write them down. What's a gamma look like? Oh, there you go. I think I re anyway. When was the last time I used a Greek letter? It's like, come on. <laughs> Guy's fixing his cars and he needs a Greek letter. Let's see what we get. What do we get for alpha? Oh man, I just sat down and I need my glasses. Of course, you should see what mess I made with everything that used to be sitting up here. Mm. Probably be able to find. Aha! Right at the top. Nice. Okay. Alpha is. Looks like. I don't know. 29. 29 degrees, really? Does that look like 29 degrees? No. Looks more like 45 to me. Well, maybe it's 60. Well, I don't believe that at all. <laughs> no. I think I'm supposed to use this other scale. Oh, I have no idea how this thing works, and it doesn't come with directions either. That's great. Yeah, well, this goes from zero to 90. I don't know, does that look like a right angle? No. <laughs> This is great, you know? <laughs> I'll tell you a little secret. <laughs> I have a master's degree in physics, and I can't figure out how to measure the angle. <laughs> Dude, there's another scale down there. 
wonder what that one is. What's that one come to? Well, according to this, it's like 60. No. <laughs> I think it's this middle scale I'm supposed to use. Okay. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Okay, so each line is evidently a degree, and I'm supposed to use the middle scale, I think. So that's like 100, well, 100, that's like 100 and uh, eight and a half. <laughs> Let's try, let's try, let's just make sure we got our thing in there good. Are we measuring the angle we think we are? Okay. Yeah, assuming 60 is 100, or is it 55? How do these line up anyway? Okay, the 90 matches up with 45. <laughs> so that's so halfway between 40 and 50 is where I'm supposed to start counting. Okay. <laughs> this is great. Let's do alpha again. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you about my PhD. <laughs> that did not end well. Uh, I got my PhD, but here I am fixing guitars. Okay, so, dude, this is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. It's like, Looks like 75. Yeah. I don't know how this one is. Oh wow, it's the same. Yep. Looks like 75. I'm calling that 75 degrees. I'm calling that 75 degrees. <laughs> Let's see if this adds up. You know, there's a, there's a theorem. I don't know if I'm going to tell you what it is, but I will know. Okay, what's that? That's about 100 and... 100 and... Okay, the 100 is there. That's a hundred and three. That's a hundred and three. So beta is a hundred and three. I'm gonna write right over the F hole. <laughs> and how about delta? If delta isn't different, you worry. Oh no, delta is exactly the same as beta. Delta equals beta. Well, it looks like 103. This must be wrong. 103 degrees. Yeah, forget about the linear, man. If I can't even get the right degree, we're in trouble. What's that come to? No, dude. It's 75. I'll tell you the theorem. That plus that should be 180. Same deal here. Why not? Why aren't they? Huh. Huh. Well, I'm not going to worry about it. But I'm going to make a cut. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to call that 104 and I'm going to call that 76. I'm going to cheat. Yeah, just like the election. It's fraud. No, when I cut them, i got to split the difference because I know the answer is 180. So I, I just have to assume we're off by a degree somehow. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do and then we'll see how it fits. I'm going to cut that 104. I'm going to cut that 76. You know, I'll just set the thing to 76. And if I go straight through, the other one's going to be 104 automatically. <laughs> Funny how that is. <laughs> okay, so much for geometry, at least today. Or at least for now. I may go get my saw. The saw has a story. Maybe I'll tell you the story. Or maybe I won't. I don't know. Are we bored yet? <laughs> okay, we measured some angles. Have a nice rest of your day. Well, well, well. Okay. So we're thinking about braces. Brace supports. Yeah. Additional brace things. So measuring those angles was so much fun I decided maybe I'll make the uh, clamps out of dowel rods and uh, just shove them in there. Just shove them in there like this you see. You know. And then this way this way the angle doesn't matter. What do you think? And you just use a lot of glue. You just use lots of glue and I have lots of glue and I'm not afraid to use it. Yeah, the original. Just, just you know, squirt it all in there and call it good. What do you think? <laughs> See, it's the angleless angle. Anything works. It's great. <laughs> okay, I'll be coming back to this. Um, but meanwhile, how do you like my new saw? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, here. Let me show you. Can you see that? On the left is what my old saw would do. It would try and light it on fire. On the right is what the new saw does, although I admit I touched it up with some sandpaper because I want it to lay flat, and I'm actually going to use that part eventually. <laughs> yeah. Think about this. <laughs> and, and I'll show you the solution in a little while. But yeah, my saw. <laughs> See these? What do you call those? <laughs> Safety glasses? Well, there's a reason for that. Because this thing is actually dangerous. You know? <laughs> there's an episode where Ben Crow, he goes, you know, I can't fit this thing in my band saw. So... I'm about to be naughty with my saw. <laughs> and he takes out some of the safety stuff and then he saws his thing and it's like, yeah, this thing, it was naughty to even buy the thing. Cause yeah, that blade is wide open and this thing is seriously dangerous. But um, yeah, can you read the price tag? I don't know. Can you? Well, that's not the real price tag. How about this one? Can you read this one? That's the real price tag. I paid 40 bucks. And to tell you the truth, the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the blade, I bought a new blade, and that was about as much as the uh, saw. So we're going to be paying close attention to as many of the other safety rules as we can. Uh, like, don't put your hand there. So I kind of got out my marks a lot and, uh, like, to remind me, don't put your hand there. But, yeah, before I did that, I kind of smoothed out the surface a little bit with, um, yeah, some 400 grit sandpaper, you know, wrapped around, uh, wrapped around a little wooden block. And, uh, and I did it very lightly, like almost nothing. But for me, the point was to get these edges flat. 
because, or can you see? Can you see? Here, I'll use the right finger <laughs> to get the edges flat because there's a little bit of a, what do you call it? You know, it's like when you sharpen your chisel, you get a little thing at the end. Yeah. yeah am I getting old or what? <laughs> So anyway, I did this side and I put like the zebra stripes down and I thought, you know, wouldn't it be clever? Oh yeah, after the sandpaper I just rubbed it with the, with the wood. Um, wouldn't it be clever if the zebra stripes were kind of lined up on some kind of unit of measurement? Well, on this side, I don't know if you can see it. That's what I did on this side because it has a unit of measurement built in. Ooh, it slides. It's seriously approximate, but yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, when I first started cutting with this thing, I, uh, you know, when you push it to the, okay, this has two modes. Here, I'll show you the modes. This is slide mode, which I like. You know, you just kind of, oh, yeah. You can push it with one finger. <laughs> yeah, I like that. But uh, it also has a chop mode. Here. I'll put it in chop mode. Right. Where you push the thing down. You push the thing down. You know, and a lot of guys like to, you know, slide. Push and slide. Well, that's kind of complicated. You know. For, you know, if you, okay, this thing can cut a board 12 inches wide. You start out by doing a plunge cut, and then you slide it across. So you can cut a pretty wide piece of stock with this thing, which is great. Um, and it's got all kind of angles. But yeah, for chop saw, you can tighten this thing down. Is it all the way back? Yeah, you can tighten that. And it turns into just a regular chop saw. In other words, you can disable the sliding feature. <laughs> and you put it in slide mode. Here, let me see. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. That's slide mode. I don't know if you can see that. Chop mode. Slide mode. I don't know, how's that focus working for you? Who knows? So you put it in slide mode. Now when I first uh, started cutting with this thing, oh, here, let's uh, unlock the slide. Um, I'd cut through and push it to the end. And then to finish the cut, you had to push down a little bit. Well, I decided, and I thought, well, you know, I can shim the rear of this thing somehow so that when it hits, um, you know, just get a little more room. Well, it turns out all I had to do was take out these little washer things. These little washers were kind of wrapped around the front to act as bumpers. Well, I just took out the bumpers. Now it goes all the way back. And you can push down and nothing bad happens, but you don't, well, well, I don't know. In principle, you don't have to do that final little push it down to finish the cut. We'll find out soon. So, uh, yeah, I'll be coming back to those braces, but my first project, here, <laughs> my first project is, I think, going to be something for the back you know see this back is about ready to go and you know I was looking at this tail block and I'm like you know it's kind of flimsy and if I was ever going to beef it up now would be a good time <laughs> so I got this little piece of walnut I think I'm going to glue it on the end um, I want to leave a little gap at the bottom and a little gap at the top, and it turns out this is just the right width to do that. It's, yeah. So all I need to do is cut it to length so that it goes over it. 
now. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but over time, uh, this tail block is sort of bent <laughs> to, com to conform with, uh, you know, to conform with the bend on the bottom of the guitar. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure what to do about that, but I think I'm going to put some sandpaper on my sanding block and sand it flat before I sand the, uh, or, you know, glue the thing on, glue the piece of walnut on. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just going to make it a little bit deeper. We're going deeper. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, and if you're going to use a saw like this, you should clamp your work. And uh, since we're going to be making some cuts that are kind of close, you know, small cuts close to the blade, what I want is like a zero clearance uh, fence. So, uh, yeah, maybe I'll set this thing up and you can watch. <laughs> Want to watch me be naughty with my saw? <laughs> okay. Well, let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so first, yeah, let's make the zero clearance. I am going to put these on. Hmm. I don't know if you can see that here. I've got to flip up this tiny little display so that I can sort of see what you're seeing. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm going to just move it back. Move that over just a skosh. And uh, I'm going to clamp it in place. Now there's a subtlety here. <laughs> You know, this isn't perfectly straight, so there's a direction where one clamp will tend to strain it. If I do it like this, <laughs> put one clamp, it's going to be a little bit warped. If I do it like this and put one clamp, it'll come straight. That actually helps straighten it out. So, yeah. There's so many details you have to think about. Okay, that's good enough. Pretty flat. Put on my glasses. Hook up my... Oh, hook up my vacuum cleaner. Yeah. Hmm. Doesn't reach. Yeah, almost. Yeah. Okay. Wonder if we're plugged in. <laughs> no, we're not plugged in. You see? <laughs> Safety first. <sighs> okay. Yeah, this thing's old enough, it doesn't have a grounded plug. Tisk tisk. <laughs> okay. Glass. There we go.
unfortunately, I still have to push it down at the end. But that's okay. Next, we get to figure out how to clamp the walnut down. <laughs> so we can make a little cuts on that. Well, okay. couple of details you need to pay attention to. Yeah, you probably can't see it from here. Uh, well, hmm. Anyway, there's like a little angle and you got to make sure the back part of the clamp is, is flat against our zero clearance fence. The other detail, which is kind of more interesting, is when you can use these clamps. Okay. I'm gonna, we're going in. I'm just going to take you off the thing for a minute. So, okay. For one thing, you want to make sure the back of your clamp. Can you see in there? Yeah. Isn't going over the piece of aluminum and is clamped flat to the back of the zero clearance thing. The other detail is the uh, bottom isn't flush. See, you have to push it down to get it to be flush. And that's just sort of how these clamps work. Which is probably how my X-brace got messed up in the first place. Okay, put you back on the stand. I think they call these things a tripod, I don't know. <laughs> okay, here's our view. Now, I want a bigger view. Because uh, we need to solve the problem of flush to the table. You know, it doesn't take a lot of force to get it to do that. Yeah, this is just... Yeah, well, here's what we're going to do. I think I'll move the chair. See that? Yeah, this is bad news. <laughs> I wonder where the other piece of walnut went. 
<laughs> this piece is still here. Dude, I can't find it. Where it went. Well, in the interest of finding it, where it went. Oh, there it is. It's right there. Huh. You can laugh if you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's what the old saw did with walnut. That's what the new saw does. That's pretty nice. Okay, so I don't know exactly how wide I want to make this thing. I'm going to take off my clamp. Because I want to do the other side. Because <laughs> that side is pretty nice. I'll take off about that much. with my bush lead clamping setup that I shouldn't really be showing you. nicer than the guy at Home Depot's side. <laughs> um, well, that's because I got, to, I got the fine blade with 96 teeth. I'm not going anywhere near it to show you. Here. Maybe it lands where you can see it. 96 teeth. Okay. Oh, I forgot to turn on the vacuum cleaner, and yes, I think it does make a difference. Hmm. Good to know. Well, let's see how this fits. <laughs> is this great? This is, this is like, yeah. Whoops! That's okay. It can be a little too big. Well, I'll just take off another tiny little piece. And it's still going to be a little too big, but this is fine. Here. Tighten that up. Vacuum cleaner. the problem with the final cut. Anyway. Let's see how that fits. Oh, that's almost exactly right. <laughs> so pleased. Can you see that? That's almost exactly the right width. And you, know, you probably can't see the gap. I'm going to try and match the gap top and bottom so it doesn't bump into the top or the bottom, but it just gets me a little more meat. Okay, I assume you guys know how to use sandpaper in a sanding block, so I'm going to just sand that thing flat, glue it up.
and then I have a nice beefy nice beefy thing to screw into in case I need more than I got Okay, so there we are, all clamped up and good to go. I use this to enforce the gap at the bottom, still a gap at the top, and actually this sort of helped clean out the squeeze out on the bottom too. Yeah, there's still some in there. I'll rinse this off some more. But uh, there we go, a beefier tail block. Okay, well I actually am planning on using dowel rod for my clamps to beef up the X-brace. Well, these will be braces too. And uh, there's a reason for the hole in the middle. And well, you can see there was some tear out because I was still learning how to use the saw. So I'm going to position the tear out so I saw straight through it. So I saw straight through it when I do the next part of the project. But the first thing I need to do is to glue the dowel rod to a sacrificial piece of wood <coughs> so that I can make my cuts through the top at the appropriate angles using chop mode but not going all the way through and then removing the pieces from the sacrificial piece of wood when uh, <laughs> when I'm done. We'll see how that works. Uh, I sort of got this idea from Ben Crow. He was gluing some nuts to a board before he sawed his nuts on his band saw. So this is kind of like that. But I'm just going to use regular glue. And uh, <laughs> maybe I just won't clamp it so hard so that it comes off at the end. We'll see how this goes. I'm still not a big fan of super glue. Yeah, I don't know if you can see this, but I just put a few dots of glue around. I don't know, this thing doesn't want to... Here, let's put it down there. Maybe this works. Can you see my dots of glue? Well, anyway, a few dots of thinned out glue, and uh, that's how I'm going to glue it to the sacrificial wood. I'm clamping it and everything. Not sure how long I have to wait. I suspect not very long, but I'm going to give it a while. <laughs> I'm not in such a big hurry. Well, this is going to be hard to see. You might have to take my word for it. But it looks to me like the laser beam hits the blade a little bit to the right of center. In other words, the beam seems to be not exactly in the middle of the blade. So, when I make my cut, I won't I won't aim the laser beam at the center of the hole that's in the piece I'm cutting but I'll aim the laser beam a little bit off to the right when I make my cuts and we'll see how it works yeah there's a reason why I have multiples <laughs> If the first one doesn't work, I get a few extra tries. Yeah, I think I forgot to push play or record. So, let's see if I can remember what I said. <laughs> so, I miscalculated where the groove... Yeah, that little piece of tear out that happened when I was learning how to use the saw. Um, because if I, uh, do my first cut at zero degrees. Um, yeah, as you recall, 
I need an angle of 76 degrees, which makes the other angle 104. So, to, but I can't, if I start at zero, I can't get 76, because this only goes up to 55, and that only goes up to 45, so I have to start offset on one side, and then go offset on the other side to get 76 degrees. So, half of 76 is 38, so I'll start at 38 on one side, move to 38 on the other, and it should be good. Uh-huh, just as I thought. When I change the angle, the laser beam moves. <laughs> so I have to readjust where I've set this thing. Yeah, but the object of the game is still to have the laser beam slightly to the right of center. And then we'll see how close we are to hitting the exact middle of the hole with the, uh, with the saw blade. There we are, set up, lasers slightly to the right of center, and I had to reverse the clamps <laughs> to keep them out of harm's way. And, yeah, is that, let me see, is that 38 degrees? Yeah, it goes 35, 40, 45. So, I think we're ready to make the first cut. Well, I don't know how well you can see that. Hard to get the camera high enough when I'm at the top. <laughs> but, kind of looks like uh, when I sight down the blade, the uh, laser is actually pretty close to the middle, or so it would seem. So let's just take a taste and see how it looks. Looks like the laser's right in the middle of the cut. So I'm just gonna go for it. Like I said, <laughs> you can see the laser going right down the middle of the cut, so the laser's a good guide, and uh, I didn't cut all the way through the sacrificial wood, and that's sort of the point of this technique. Now we're going to rotate and do the, sec the, do the other cut. Okay, here comes the second cut. Well, <laughs> we're 
Where'd my piece go? <laughs> Not enough glue. Okay. We'll uh, get back to you when I find the piece. <laughs> Are we running? Okay. Here's a clue of what happened to uh, the piece. <laughs> it's, uh, at least I found half of it. Don't know where the other half went. But uh, I'm just going to cut the end off of our sacrificial board and try again. This time I'm going to glue it a little bit tighter. I'm not going to try so hard to make it easy to get off. I'm just going to huh, glue it down like I normally would with regular glue. And uh, I figure it will rip off and we might have to sand it flat, but yeah, I think it'll be okay. Okay, so here's another one of my counterweighted clamp tricks. See, the thing of it is I've been doing like test fitting of the top to the sides, and the problem has been that this edge kind of came out a little bit so that the top didn't quite fit, well, either along the top or the bottom, but... I decided the problem was in the bottom. Now, I let this set overnight and it made a difference. Seems to be holding. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'll take that off. So, I don't know. Let's just say I'm pretty happy with how the top is fitting. It's pretty even. I mean, if anything, you know, all the work I've done on the top, it's, it's flattened it out a little bit, so it tends to... Well, it's not perfect. Well, when I clamp it up, there'll still be a little bit of trickery, you know, clamp it down and shove it in kind of thing when I glue it a little bit, but I think it definitely made an improvement. And I'm going to leave it clamped up that way. And I think I think I'm actually going to this little dipsy doodle I'm going to patch it before I glue it down. I was going to wait until later, but I've kind of decided, you know, let's not assume there's going to be a big gap and it's going to be ugly. It might turn out nice, so I'll be, uh, I'll go over this again with uh, <laughs> my desktop sanding system. And, you know, I think I'm going to go over the top again like with a sanding block to do the best I can. Yeah, well, there's going to be gaps in some of these places because... Well, anyway, we'll see how, how it is. I have a feeling... I mean, it could turn out terrible, but it might turn out better than I thought. So, I'm just going to assume it's going to turn out for the best. So I think this, I'll just mix some of my slightly diluted tight bond with some sawdust. And I've got plenty of sawdust in my vacuum cleaner, so uh, I think I'll do that. But, you know, this saw, I think it's my new favorite thing. I'm still kind of amazed at how nicely it was set up. It's like that little pointer. I mean, it looks tweaked to me. You know, how could that possibly be right? Except whoever had this thing before tweaked it and set it so that it's just right. You know, and the same thing goes on the uh, angles on the front. 
zero degrees is zero degrees like exactly <laughs> and the laser goes right down the middle of the cut so whoever had this before did a pretty nice job setting it up I just wish I had a I mean dude this thing is seriously dangerous I mean that bothers me a little bit I mean it's like you've got that fast spinning blade and your hand is like right next to it and there's no way around it not the way it is and it seems unlikely that I'd be able to get spare parts so it's like you know, you start thinking about things like no loose clothing, because, dude, that would suck you right in. If you're, like, wearing a tie or something. <laughs> in you go. Because look which way the blade spins. That's going to suck your face right into the blade. So, yeah. I may have to start tucking in my shirt before I use that thing. But, yeah, dust is going everywhere. <laughs> I kind of like that. So, anyway, I'm going to mix up some filler, <laughs> get some detritus out of my vacuum cleaner, and make some filler for that. I don't know if I'm going to show you that. Maybe I will. some nice video editing software. <laughs> this is kind of kind of annoying if I don't. So, okay. I'm using probably what's left of the thinned out glue. Because <laughs> I won't be needing it anymore, I don't think. Mostly it was thin because I was making plywood. I think from now on. Yeah. yeah. We got some walnut mixed in with whatever it was. That came out of the vacuum cleaner. And we'll just stir it up. Stir it up. Huh. some <laughs> big stuff we don't want. But we got it anyway. There. <laughs> there. This is, this is the way we fix guitars. Do -de do 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 do. A little more glue. Mm -hmm. Do -de do do. Oops, I'm making a mess. Not a lot later. 
a little later. <laughs> okay, that'll do. Move this stuff out of the way. Whoops. That's why we have a vacuum cleaner. Now. Where was I? Now, some people make this stuff out of super glue. Not me though. There, and here's why. Okay. I want to just smoosh it in there with my fingers. <laughs> That's why. Okay, well, this is pretty ugly. But, Okay, I don't know, but at least I can go wash my hands. <laughs> I, think, I think that's an advantage. There. Yeah, I decided to drip a little extra glue on top of the wound and make sure it soaks in with enough glue but most of that will come back off again I think but I wanted to make sure we can get a nice smooth area when we're done cleaning it off with you know a chisel and some sandpaper there you go Okay, let's take another shot at this. Uh, first cut number one. <laughs> okay. Whoops. Yeah, it's still pretty good. Put the saw into chop mode. <laughs> Didn't fly off. Okay, and now cut number two. Well, my arm's probably gonna get in the way. Well, never mind. <laughs> That broke right off. Let's see if the others come off. Uh -huh. That one did. That one did too. And so did that. Well, that was more successful than I was expecting. 
a little bit of tear out on that one. I don't know if you can see that. That's okay. <laughs> this end up. <laughs> so I got my braces. Or my brace supports. So the way I glued it was I used a very thin layer of full strength glue on the dowel. And then I stuck it to, this is red cedar, which is a very absorbent wood. So there was like no squeeze out even though I'd completely covered it, although thinly. And, uh, yeah, dude, that worked great. <laughs> Just a little bit of trouble, but no, I'm very happy. <laughs> very, very happy. And, uh, yeah, just for fun, I'm going to cut out, cut off the end of cut off the end of my sacrificial board because I think it's cool. Hmm. Let go. Oh, I never know how these things go. There we go. thing is very dangerous because you know I want to just reach for the block of wood uh-uh I need to learn what I need to learn is don't move the thing until the motor stops that's a safety rule or a suggestion and then move it up and reach for the reach for the wood okay that's all for now it's kind of weird. All that drama with the saw just to get these four little pieces. <laughs> yeah, here. I'll show you how they go. Sort of. Uh, uh. Well, anyway. Kind of like that. Is the idea. <laughs> Just to reinforce the X. So they need a little work. I mean, you know, the whole point was this one brace that, which one is it? <laughs> this one. This one that isn't quite perfect. So the idea is to carve it to fit better. Carve it to fit better. And <laughs> and I learned how to hold the camera. This one still has a little bit of the inner circle <laughs> for relief, but I want, them, I want all the pieces to have a little bit of relief so that way when you shove them in, you can shove them in. It isn't, you're not going to be stopped by the sharp point at the end. But uh, yeah, <laughs> this end up, the end that's sort of brownish is the end that was sticking to the red cedar that I was using as the sacrificial board. And, oh yeah, <laughs> there's the piece of cedar. You know, weirdly, weirdly, if the kerf was a little bit wider, <laughs> you could, yeah, just shove that on there, and that could be the other solution, but I wanted it like this. Just, you know, a little something, a little something to make sure it doesn't come apart again. So, huh, yeah, who was it says, uh, uh, luthiers use files more than anybody else? 
I don't know. Maybe I just don't think of it. I mean, I have some, so I think I'll finish these off with files just because. Okay, so this is a test clamping. I'd say I have just barely enough clamps, really. But. I mean, I figure if I can clamp it up dry with no rattles, that's probably good enough. Okay, so that's how my uh, clamp turned out. Um, <laughs> my hand carving didn't turn out perfect. I don't know if you can see a little bit of a gap there. A little bit of a gap there. Um, <laughs> But the ones that didn't need carving turned out great. That one's great. That one's great. I don't know if you can see it. Um, so yeah, I might squirt some more glue in there. And there. <laughs> and maybe in the top too, I might squirt some more glue down there. Of course, it's debatable whether or not that's a, a good idea, but <laughs> yeah, I might. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, leave a comment uh, if you want, because yeah, it's debatable. In principle, you should do the best you can to get wood on wood, but you know, it doesn't always turn out, and sometimes you just need to declare victory and move on. At least that's my opinion. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I think I'm going to sand just a little bit more. Just smooth it out a little bit more. Try and sharpen the edge just a little bit more. So that when I clamp it down, I will hopefully minimize the gap. And, oh yeah. <clears throat> I already... Did some more sanding on this thing. And <clears throat> yeah, this is looking pretty good. I don't know if that patch turned out so great. I might have to hit that with a sanding block just a little bit. But the rest of it's looking pretty good. I'm just saying. And yeah, <laughs> the quality workmanship, I'm not going to try and fix that. Those gaps, I'm going to seal them back up and leave it for posterity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, too bad. Yeah, too bad they didn't know how to glue curve at the factory. Because this is factory, dude. That is totally factory. <laughs> that didn't, like, happen over time. That happened before it shipped. Just saying. Oh well, I guess I changed my mind. I decided to run a bead around <laughs> the curve along the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what could go wrong, right? Yeah, and when that's done bubbling up, I'll squirt some more in there. Just, you know, get as much glue on there as we can. <laughs> It's sort of, you know, counterintuitive, but hmm, kind of goes against the grain. But hey, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> it's not like I'm building a new guitar or anything. Different rules. You know, what could go wrong? <laughs> oh yeah, all the new glue caused the old glue to melt and the whole thing came apart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wouldn't that be great? What do you think? <laughs> I know your deepest secret fears. <laughs> anyway, and I did put some more glue in the cracks. 
on this thing. And yeah, I might not be done with that either. Wait for a little more where it's soaking in. Make it look like a good glue joint, even if it isn't. <laughs> okay. Well, while I'm waiting for my bead to dry, and since I worry about things that are probably not going to happen, I uh, did a partial clamp up to make sure the sides don't forget where I want them <laughs> in case things do soften up in there. I want it to remember. So, uh, yeah. And when I do the final clamp up, yeah, I'll be starting with five clamps and then fill in the gaps with the little ones. I mean, it's easier to align the top this way, I think. Okay, well, I've been doing some sanding on the top. Uh, so just to show you, I'm using a sanding block. I'm using my special X thing as the sanding block, and all the sandpaper that was down flat is gone now. I decided I'm pretty much done with that, and if I do something with the frets, I'll do something different. But the main thing is, yeah, you want to use a sanding block for this, and... You know, what you want to do is you're mostly sanding the flat area near the edge. And you're just kind of creeping up on the edge so that effectively you're acting to sharpen the edge. But yeah, you do not want your sandpaper block to roll over and dull the edge because that'll show up as a gap when you re-glue it. And like I say, I'm a little bit optimistic that this is going to turn out pretty nice. We'll see. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty much already done. That's just to show you. Now, huh. yeah, I think I'm going to see. Huh. I don't know if you can see in there. But, hmm. It's time to put, there you go. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? It's time to put more glue in the cracks. <laughs> yeah, time for more glue in the cracks. Yeah, that's great. I'm like, <laughs> obviously I know what I'm doing. <laughs> the thing of it is, when you're using the, uh, the big crack joinery technique, the glue dries and it gets sucked back up in the crack, so <laughs> you need to add more. <laughs> Otherwise, you end up with an empty crack. You want a full one. Well, I do. I like having a full crack. So, anyway, I'm not going to do that, you know. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> you just put a bunch of more glue on there until it's done going in. No. Dude, I know it's not as good as wood on wood, but the way I see it, you know, it's not as strong as wood on wood, but it's stronger than air. So, no matter what, I think it's uh, stronger than air. And <laughs> after what I went through scraping the glue off this thing in the first place, I mean, it wasn't tight bond, but it was some kind of white glue. I'm telling you what. Give this stuff enough time, and huh, 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 it fossilizes. It becomes very hard. It becomes very strong. I mean, because none of that stuff wanted to, like, just peel off the wood, even though it was thick. And it was not very much fun trying to cut it with a chisel either. You know, wood is much easier to cut. So, yeah, I think, you know, the glue and the crack technique is underrated. I mean, it's not as good as wood, but maybe it's not as bad as you think. Because, dude, <laughs> I'm telling you, the whole rest of this guitar is built using the glue and the crack technique. And <laughs> like I said, you know, here, I'm still working on the crack. <laughs> See, the guys who built this thing 
like air. Oh, so this is kind of what this is looking like. You know, the bead I laid down. But yeah, this will probably, this will need more glue. I mean, here, the glue is kind of, you know, it soaks in, and so we'll need to add more. But it's not ready yet. This is still drying. So, uh, yeah. More glue in the cracks, Scotty. <laughs> but Captain, she'll blow. It's like, don't worry about it, Scotty. She already blows. <laughs> so there you go for now. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, I'm showing you before, I do this every night, almost. Um, clamp up the guitar so that the sides and top remember how they want to be. Um, so, let's have a look. Okay. Yeah, I put another bead along the top. Um, I don't know if that's enough. Yeah, it's probably enough. And, you know, I put a bead along the bottom. Figure <laughs> I'll never have another chance. Um, hmm. I'll be honest. Well, <laughs> do I really have to say that? No. <laughs> uh, it seems more solid. You know, it, it, it just does. Hard to quantify because I didn't like to do a before and after measurement of anything. But anyway, I think I'm done with the back and sides. And am I going to put more glue in there? I mean, that's the only spot that still has a hole. Mm, maybe a little bit of it. No, that's pretty full. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's not quite dry either. It'd be too soon to squirt more in there. <coughs> and the top. Let's see. Yeah, I think I'll declare that good enough. <laughs> okay. Now, where'd that little piece go? <laughs> Here we are. Remember when I said I wanted to use that little piece? Of course you do. <laughs> I remember. Okay, I'm going to sand this because I want a really good contact. <laughs> I want it to stick. Hmm. Uh. On the other hand, I don't want to mess up the braces. Let's not sand the braces. Push it down in there. Hey, 
<laughs> okay. Clean it up just a little bit. I don't want to clean it up too much. That's good enough. <laughs> colors. <laughs> I don't have black. Didn't come with black. Okay. I'll do blue. See if I can just zoom in. Hey, that's pretty good. Here. This thing's got a pretty good zoom, dude. Check it out. <laughs> okay, that's all for now. Um, I think I'm done. I'm going to glue that sucker up. Like, for real. Like, you know, put the top on the bottom with glue. Like, this is the last time. Here, see if I can rotate that. No, it's already stuck. You see, wood on wood works great. You'd be surprised. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. This other stuff. Here, let's zoom back out again. Man, I like that zoom. Yeah. <laughs> All this other stuff around the edges. I don't know how good that really would stick. Something well. Okay, no, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that at all. That may be stuck pretty well. Yeah. Okay. While I'm here, I am going to just squirt a little more in this one little spot. Even though it's not quite ready. <clears throat> now we're good. Okay, am I going to do it right this instant? No, I'm going to, uh, no, I need to, see gluing on the top, you need to be kind of like ready for it. I'm going to have my, my second cup of coffee first. <laughs> Till then. <laughs> 